every now and then a one of those 4,000 plus, because now with the new additions it's over 4,000 pipes, but sometimes one of those will go out of tune, or several of them, and then I have to climb up here and tune it. The organ is professionally tuned twice a month, but uh, even between those times with that many pipes, uh, some may get out of tune. And this is how you get up into the organ. And we're going to take you in here in just a minute. I'm standing right inside that trap door, surrounded by some of the largest pipes in the organ. And this big fellow here is really a wind trunk. This carries great amounts of compressed air from the blower, which is up on the fourth floor, down here into the organ, where it's sent into various reservoirs that equalize the pressure, so that if I play a big chord and it sucks a lot of wind, uh, the reservoirs immediately adjust to that and keep the pressure constant. Uh, we're now inside the organ. This is something that very few people ever get to see. Uh, these are principal pipes here. Uh, these are getting fairly big and then as you see it continues on up here. Uh, these are the pipes that are inside the instrument behind the curtain. Uh, this down here on the floor is a reservoir. When the organ is turned on and wind is blown into it, the top of this rises up and it, when it's filled with air and these springs serve to keep the air pressure constant. And then down here you can see where the air comes out of the reservoir and is sent through these green pipes to various divisions of the organ. This whole space is about the size of a three-story house. And here is the ladder that takes us up to the second story. There, I'm now standing at the second level, and there's still a third level above that. And now I'll come back down. Would you like to hear a pipe? Okay, now, right in back of us and is this is the, that pipe. I mean, it just goes all the way up to the top. You really can't see it because these other pipes are in front of it, but it's just like a great big flute, except that it takes a powerful amount of air to... That's how we could keep the kids busy Sunday morning at one pipe in the <laughs> This is the main wind trunk. This, is the, this brings all the air from the organ blower, which is a series of fans. Uh, it brings it down from the fourth floor down into here, and this is the first of many reservoirs that keep it stabilized. The air goes in and then comes back out, uh, always on a constant pressure. Now we're going to go into the swell chamber, the one of the divisions of the instrument. It's in a separate room, and the camera will follow me in here. And now you can see what an array of pipes there are. Uh, there are probably uh, just a little bit less than a thousand, maybe a thousand pipes in here. And as you see, some of them are smaller than a lead pencil, and then others, the lower notes, require much larger pipes. And right here at my feet, there will be pipes, but this, th there are three sets <coughs> of stops in the swell organ that are in Hagerstown, Maryland right now, being rebuilt and revoiced. And uh, they will be back uh, within a couple of weeks, I think. But you can see where the holes, where the pipes would set, and they will flare up in this direction. 
And then over on this side, you can see those louvers that close to make the sound softer. And then right now, they are, of course, in the open position. We're right behind the grill cloth at this point. Uh, that is uh, some of the uh, electrical equipment that operates the swell shades. Was there anywhere else, or this is it? Yeah, this is this is one of the reservoirs. Uh, this is another one <coughs> down here, and that that uh, box is really uh, a series of bricks that have been wrapped in paper to keep them together. But that's one of the weights that uh, is used to uh, make the uh, pressure of the wind always steady. Okay, and when you come out, just flip that switch and oh, turn out the light. Oh yeah, that must be closed, yeah. Well, now we're going to go into the choir room. This room is always something of a mess but even more so right after church, which is when we are doing this filming. This is the folders for the church choir music, and down here uh, the music for the St. Andrew Chorale, which won't start for another few weeks, and so that music hasn't been put out yet. And in the center of the room is an, a very, very old and beautiful, but still pretty decrepit Steinway piano, and the choir sits all around the room. This is kind of interesting. Over here we have a shrine to one of my predecessors, Seth Bingham, who was born 100 years ago. Uh, and this is a picture of him at the organ that was installed in 1920 under his direction, and a plaque that was given to him on the occasion of, I believe, his 35th uh, anniversary as organist here. And this is a picture of Dr. Bingham. And here is where we keep the youth choir robes, also used for acolytes and crucifers. And the rest of this is music storage, and it goes on and on. We're going to show you the library in just a minute, which is really quite amazing. Follow me. This is the choir library. It has over, over uh, extended its space, so we have some of it out here. But uh, in this room, there are hundreds and hundreds of anthems, floor to ceiling, all packed away in boxes, thanks to our wonderful choir librarian, whom most of you know, Jeanette Robbins. Jeanette spends a lot of time in this space filing music and getting the music out for the next Sunday. And uh, this is all numerical, and you can see we get up here into the uh, 1,000, this is one, 1,011, uh, and so on, 1,014, 1,016, and the boxes that aren't here in this room are the ones that are scattered in other shelves throughout the music suite. <coughs> 